الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبك بالله بن عثيمين رحم الله تعالى he ended his treaties sittings during the uh, blessed month of Ramadan he said concluding this month he said my brothers the month of Ramadan is leaving us and it is either a witness for you or against you so whoever ends the month and he did good then let them praise Allah for that and have glad tidings of much reward. For indeed Allah does not lose the reward of a person who did good. As for the person who did evil acts, then let them repent to his Lord a sincere repentance. For indeed Allah forgives for whoever repents. And before going on, I just wanted to share something that happened to me this evening where I'm staying currently in Ethiopia. And I'm staying at a place, uh, a, a small town, which has, doesn't have a lot of massage I believe. And so I took the, the taxi and it was storming down rain. Just one taxi that came, took me to the masjid. All I had was my water jug because I wanted to make sure I could break my fast, but I just wanted to be with the Muslims, find out where the masjid was, at least pray, get my Maghrib and Isha in. And, you know, and then return to my room because there's other things going around in this area that it's, it's better to be here than out. And so uh, I went and, you know, it was storming down raining. And I love, that's why I love traveling, okay? Uh, when you travel and you, you see, it reminded me of Yemen a little bit. And, and there's a, a big, strong relationship with Ethiopia and Yemen from history. I, obviously, we know Najashi, of course. But even prior to that, Ibraha, who wanted Abraha, who wanted to destroy the Kaaba in Mecca, and the Surah Al-Fil was revealed about him. And uh, so there's a there's a long-standing history between these and the, the culture and the Yemeni scholars of, of Ahl Sunnah. They come here often. They've been coming for years doing Dawah. And there's a lot of students of knowledge and Mashaikh here in, in Ethiopia that have graduated or came out of Damaj and some of the Marrakesh of Sunnah. In Yemen, especially the Maj, I think more of the Ethiopians and maybe Ma'bar, some other places. And anyhow, when I came into the masjid, it was storming, raining, and they have their own culture uh, about shoes and placing your shoes. So I had to go with the culture and not and take off my shoes in a certain area and blah blah blah. Anyhow, and I sat in there. I had my water, and then the people. Yeah, there was a, a lecture going on. The, you know, the, the sheikh was delivering beautiful speech. And of course, it was mainly in Amharic. But, you know, I caught some Arabic, some hadith in ayat. And, you know, tried to guess as best as I could of what, what the topic was. But it was just good in general. It just gave me something to reflect. And it was just a builder of iman. Because whenever you're in the majalis of dhikr, of talib al ilm you know, it's, it's, uh, if your heart is open, it's always something good. Especially if it's a dhikr of ahl sunnah I'm not talking about Ahl Bid'ah, but if you're in the Dhikr, Majalis uh, Ahl Dhikr, Ahl Sunnah, then this is Khair. You know, and it, it, it will have some effect on your Iman. And the Malaik are there, and the Rahmah is being descended, and there's forgiveness being given. You're, you're getting forgiveness. So, anyhow, all I had was my water. Then the Sheikh, the, the Adhan went, and the Sheikh, he kept actually talking when the Adhan went, and people started breaking their fast, boom, boom. And then on my right and on my left, you know, people saw that I had water and they just, you know, boom, you know, just for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, boom, on my right, this guy gives me one date and I just made strong dua for him. And then on my left, boom, he gave me a date. Then on the right, he gave me another date. And then on my left, I think he gave me another date and a sambusa. And I was just, I made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he increases them for every piece that wraps the sambusa. You know, that Allah increases the riz and increases the makhair. Because you don't know how those small good deeds, how they make a difference. Al-ma'un, the small kindnesses. It's so important. And that was one of those times. I have had money in my pocket. Maybe the brother, they had, you know, they were eating together. All I had was water. They contributed, you know, helped their Muslim brother who they knew was a stranger because I didn't look like anybody there. I didn't dress probably more like most of the people there. We looked different. I was a stranger. People noticed me right off the get-go. And lillah subhanahu wa ta'ala, boom, he gives you, you know, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is how we want to conclude our month. 
this is how we want to. We want to do these good deeds and these small kindnesses. And we should do that out, outside of this month. Then Ben Othamin, he says, Allah has subscribed for you in the end of this month acts that will bring you closer to Allah and increase your iman. That increased my iman, them giving me. And increase your good deeds. Allah has prescribed for you zakat al-fitr. And we spoke about this already. He did in his treaties. And Allah prescribed for you to make takbir on the last day once the sun sets until the Eid prayer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, So that you may finish the month and make takbir to Allah for what he has guided you and so that you may be thankful. The takbir should be said like this, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillah alhamd. And the men should say it aloud in the mosques, marketplace, and houses. This is to show the greatness of Allah and to show thankfulness. As for women, they should say it quietly because they are ordered with modesty and using low voices. There's not a more beautiful sight than to see the people making takbir, uh, takbir of Allah in every place after they finish the month. They will fill the places with takbir and praise and praise, seeking the mercy of Allah and scared of his punishment. Allah has also prescribed the Eid prayer, and it is a completion to the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam ordered both men and women to attend the Eid prayer, even though the house is better for the women, except for the Eid prayer. So it shows us, Ahabitabillah, this is very, very important, a very important sunnah that we shouldn't leave. Uh, and Umm Atiyah radiallahu ta'ala said, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam ordered us to go out for the Eid uh, for for fitr in al adha, the young virgins and the menstruating women. As for the menstruating woman, woman, she should avoid the prayer area and should witness the goodness and the many Muslims. She said, "O Messenger of Allah, one of us doesn't have the jilbab." He sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Let one of her sisters give her one of her jilbabs." Mutafakun <clears throat> and. Then the Shaykh, he mentioned after that, he says, it is from the Sunnah to eat before leaving the house. It should be an odd number of dates. And as Ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to eat on the day of Fitr an odd number of dates. Huwahu Ahmed wal Bukhari. And they should go by foot to the masjid. Except if you have an excuse like being old or being far away. As Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, it is from the sunnah to go to the Eid prayer walking. Graded Hassan by a Tirmidhi. It is also sunnah for the man to have a nice appearance and wear perfume wear his best clothes. Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, Umar bought a silk cloak from the market, took it to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, O oh, Allah's apostle, apostle, take it and adorn yourself with it during the Eids and when the delegations visit you. Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam answered, this dress is for those who have no share in the hereafter. Mutafqun alayhi. He said this because it was made of silk, which is haram for men to wear. As for the women, she should leave without beautifying herself or wearing perfume or dressing immodestly. And unfortunately, this is a mukhalifa that we see in many uh, amongst the Muslims, uh, Muslimas everywhere. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us in them. Ameen. Don't think it's unique to the West. It's everywhere in the Muslim lands, in non-Muslim lands, everywhere that many of the women, either due to a lack of knowledge or... Their customs kind of dictate certain uh, dress and, and things and perfume and makeup and everything. Wallahu musta'an. So it's a mukhalifa that needs to be addressed. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and guide the Muslim women. Ameen ya rabbil alameen. Then he says, and you should come to the prayer with khushu and a present heart. And you should increase in the dhikr of Allah and dua and seeking mercy, and fearing his punishment. And they should picture the people gathering to the masjid as the people gathering between the hands of Allah on the day of judgment. And you should be happy with the blessings of Allah on you for finishing Ramadan and being able to do the prayer, fasting, reciting, charity, and other acts of worship. For indeed, that is better than the world and what it contains. Say, in the, in the grace of Allah and in his mercy, and that they should rejoice, it is better than that which they gather.
For indeed, fasting and establishing Ramadan with faith and expecting its reward is a cause for forgiveness from sins and purification. So the believer gets happy with the completion of the fast and prayer so that it purifies them. While the person of weak Iman is happy to get the fasting over with. And the difference between the two groups is vast. So it's very important. That's a way, one, one of the ways you can test yourself on how you, how you feel about the month of Ramadan. Do you feel like a kind of a sadness after this, uh, this time you've been, you know, yes, there was difficulties. Yes, you're losing weight for those who lose weight. Yes, you're this and that and the other. Uh, but you miss the Qiyam al You miss the, the gathering and breaking the fast with the, the brothers and the sisters or your family and, and all of those, those blessed times. Because then you, you'll go back to your normal lifestyle. Uh, but hopefully you carry some of these uh, great acts of ibadah into the, your next stage in life, which is after this month of Ramadan. Then the sheikh, he said, My brothers, this month is over, but the actions of a believer never finish before his death. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And worship your Lord until death overtakes you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O you who believe, fear Allah as he should be rightfully Feared and do not die except as Muslims. Ya yalladina amanu, ittaqullaha haqqu taqatihi wa la tumutunna illa wa antum muslimun. And the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said, When the slave dies, then his actions are cut. So nothing cuts the acts of worship except death. So when Ramadan is completed, then the believers should still continue to fast. Fasting is allowed during the whole year. And we praise Allah for that. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said, Whoever fasts Ramadan, then fasted six from Shawal. It is as if they fasted the whole year. Ruahu Muslim. Also fasting three days of every month. It is best if these are the days of uh, Bayav, which are the 13th, 14th, and 15th of the uh, Hijri calendar of the, the month. The Prophet ﷺ said, O oh, Abu, uh, Abu Dhar, if you fast three days of every month, then let it be 13th, 14th, and 15th. Ruahu Ahmed wa Nisai. The Prophet alayhi salatu salam said also, uh, also said that fasting on the day of Arafah is a forgiveness for the past and upcoming years. Ruahu Muslim. And fasting on the day of Ash Ashura <coughs> forgives the past year. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was asked, which is the best day after Ramadan? He sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, after fasting Ramadan, fast in the month of Muharram, Ruahu Muslim. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, the actions are raised on Mondays and Thursdays, so I like my <coughs> actions to be raised while I'm fasting. Ruahu then the Shaykh mentioned, he said, When the night prayer is over in Ramadan, know that it is permissible to pray every night of the year, and to Allah is the praise for that. The Prophet ﷺ used to pray at night until his feet swelled, and when he was asked about this, he said, Should I not be a thankful slave? Bukhari. The Prophet ﷺ also said, O oh people, spread the salam, and feed the poor, and keep the relations of the womb, and pray at night while the people sleep. You will enter paradise in peace. Uh, Ruah, uh, it was graded Sahih uh, by Imam Tirmidhi. In Sahih Muslim, the Prophet wasallam said, the best prayer after the obligatory ones is the night prayer. A person should pray the night prayer until in units of two, and if they fear the Fajr will approach, then they should pray one rakah, and that will be their witr. And if they wish, they can pray the different ways that were prescribed in the fourth described in the, in the fourth sitting. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala descends every last third of the night to the first heaven, or to the lowest heaven and says, who will make dua so that I can answer it? Who will ask so I will give them? Who will seek forgiveness so that I will grant it to him? Mutafakun alayhi, this is Bukhari, Muslim. And dhikr follows the five prayers as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when you finish the prayer, then make dhikr of Allah standing, sitting, and on your side. So make dhikr often. That's a, some, an easy act of ibadah all of, all of us can do. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam finished the prayer, he would say astaghfirullah three times, then say Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam tabaraka ya, uh, wa ya da jalali wa lakam. Uh, uh, <coughs> Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam tabarakta wa yada jalali wa ikram. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, who, who, whoever made tasbih 
after every prayer 33 times, and hum 33 times, and takbir 33 times. This is 99. Then said, to complete 100, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la, la al-muq wa la al-hamd wa ala kulli shayin qadir. Then he is forgiven for his sins, even if it was as much as the foam of the sea, ruahu muslim. So strive, my brothers, and do the acts of obedience. Leave the sins so that you may achieve a successful life in this life as well as the next. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whoever does good, male or female, and he is a believer, we will make cert we will certainly make him live a happy life, and we will most certainly give them their reward for the best of what they did. All on make us steadfast with Iman and on doing righteous deeds and give us a nice life and allow us to be with the righteous. And all praises due to Allah, Lord of the worlds. وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم